Well, ladies and gentlemen, people of all creeds, the time has come once again. It's been a while since we did one of these last, but Kenny and I are finally back to head back to Final Fantasy. With one of the greatest installments in the entire series, Final Fantasy VII. Yep. I know our order for the series has been all over the place. Hell, it's been the same since we did Final Fantasy 1 is when I think I set up the original order, which was 1, 2, one trigger, two, 3, 4, yeah, this. Three, four, yeah, 3, 4, this, and then isn't, like, 9 after this one, and then it's, like, 6 or something? I don't quite remember what the order was set to be. Uh, I never actually had an order planned until, like, last night on my way home from work for what we're going to do after this. I'll bring this up again towards the af the end of the game, but I think after this, the order we're going to go for is 5, 6, Chrono Cross, 8, 9, 10. Which I know delays 9 for so long, <laughs> I really want to get through 8 first. I mean, I'd actually rather get through 5 first, since 5 is really dense. Yeah, five's really dense. Also, uh, this is Mark's a first for our Final Fantasies. In one way, there's no extra opening movies for me to play uh, uh, in post-editing. Though, seven's also notable in that I think it has potentially the most boring opening video in the series. It's just this static screen with these credits. <laughs> and it takes uh, a while. <laughs> I think my favorite one belongs to either six or nine. Of course, I would be biased in those choices. Uh, counting re-release ones, mine's probably between the 4DS opening, the one I showed before that LP, and yeah, 9's probably. 9's is cool just because it shows a couple flashes of, of the cutscenes, it shows you the world map, uh, but 6 is just really cool because it shows just a really giant prologue of what's going on, and it has, it opens with one of my favorite themes in the entire game, The Omen. Yeah, I'm also kind of a fan of Tins, despite it being more or less word for word, camera angle for camera angle, a cutscene from later on in the game. Listen to my story. Mind you, I just really like Ten's story. It's one of the, Ten's, uh, I'll talk about this again more in detail when we eventually get to Ten. But Ten's story is one I didn't like much as a kid, but the older I got, the more I appreciated a lot about it. Ten's is really fun. I actually like it a little bit more from a gameplay, gameplay standpoint than a story standpoint. Also, this game marks an interesting uh, thing. This is where Tetsuya Nomura finally stopped being just a monster designer and became a character designer as well as a story writer. Took on a much larger role this time around. Yeah, and as you see, because he's still working on the series in depth to this day, he's still very much in the series, and especially since Sakaguchi left, I think after 10? 10, yeah. That's also when Nobu left. Yeah. Either way, we're going to start off a new game here. We actually can't select anything until it loads the memory card. And it's time for us to be signed for the opening cutscene.
what a nice day to be back in town. Oh, look at these Boom. nice fellows. Oh, that was oh, a geez. backdrop. Ow. Wow, Jesse's got a strong kick. Well, that's rude. Did he just salute Cloud? Fellow newcomer. Okay, low-key, something I love about that is just how our ex-soldier here tides, uh, times his head beats the music. Either way, I'm actually going to the controls really quickly to set the controls because Final Fantasy VII is the only PlayStation Final Fantasy to use the Japanese control scheme where circles confirm and X is cancel. And while well, I can get used to that for the Metal Gear Solid series, not here. <laughs> I'm also setting my battle speed I've up. I've always had X's confirm and circle as wait. This is the one game. This is the one game where I can actually use use it consistently, I guess. Also, uh, you can. This is, I think, the first Final Fantasy you can completely customize the window color. You can grab potions from the unconscious bodies. And now we're going to have our first enemies: military police or MPs. 30 HP, 16 XP, 10 gil. Uh, they can drop potions 12.5% of the time, and I think they can just do physical attacks otherwise. Yeah, they're. Well, they're your basic enemies. I don't think they can cast any sort of magic. So. Yeah. There's really no there's really no need to cast any sort of magic on them since Cloud can one-shot them anyways. Yeah. But it's always really flashy when you kill something with a lightning bolt. Uh you can use thunder early on. Honestly, I actually recommend saving your MP for later in this area. But it's a viable option. You can just physically attack most of these fights. Uh, one thing I want to note about the unconscious body is that you can actually pick up two potions from the first body, and then the second body just won't have a potion. So really? It's just, I actually just real I j just learned that on the last time I played this game. Ah. I thought it was really strange. By the way, as we're learning, we are an ex-soldier named Cloud. Being named after weather phenomenon was a thing in the PlayStation games for some reason. I am keeping basically every character's name the same, with one minor exception, and even then that's just more correcting an error. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly which character you're talking about, because I made the exact same change. And we're here to bomb this North Mako reactor. More on what that is later, but this is the command of the operation. This is... Barrett. Totally Barrett's useless. character, I believe... Oh, I, I love Barrett. Uh, <laughs> I don't use him ever. The thing about Barrett's character is, if I'm recalling correctly, in the Japanese version, he was pretty much just a straightforward hard-ass at times. In the American version, they basically made him Mr. T, and that's the characterization that kind of stuck from there on. Yeah, I never really thought about that. That they just made him that kind of a figure. I never really made this connection. Yeah. Anyways, our next foe... He'll show up here. Is the Guard Hound. The Guard Hound has 42 HP... Uh, oh my god. 20 XP, 2 AP, and 12 gil. It can attack you with a... I believe it It can attack you with its tentacle, but it just only does slightly more damage than its normal attack. It can drop potions as well, but pretty low chance. Yeah. It's the first area. They're, everything here is basically goblins. <laughs> goblins. They say at the beginning of every adventure, if there's a goblin, it's a, an adventure worth taking. Which is odd, because 7, I think 7 out of all of the games prior to 10 has the latest goblin appearance. Ah, the Mako Reactor theme. This is definitely one of my favorite themes in the game. Seven soundtrack is probably my overall favorite in the series, and th th there's just so many good tracks. There's a lot of good tracks in this game. And here we're learning what we're doing here. Uh, Mako reactors suck Mako energy out of the planets, and essentially right now we're a bunch of eco-terrorists. Uh, we're working with these guys, they want to do a certain thing to this reactor that is kind of widely frowned upon. Blow it up. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a ballsy move making us seem like terrorists from the start, but you know what? I like it. Also, it's a pretty unique here. start because you don't have some Mary Sue character who's always doing good things like <laughs> Cecil. Yeah, that's one thing I'll say about Cecil. He, he, he's a Mary Sue. He wants to always do good things, but I do like that he at least questions himself. Also, what we got down there was our first treasure chest. Treasure chests in this game are a gold and they shine across the background uh, to stand out from it because Seven is the first game in the series to use completely pre-rendered backgrounds or 3D models on top of it. I really like the backgrounds in this game, in general. Yeah, all three of the Final Fantasy games on PlayStation have really good-looking backgrounds, but I really like the very 
not cyberpunk, kind of Blade Runner-y kind of backgrounds that this game tends to have a lot, especially in the early sections. I think s some of my more favored locations are like where all the materia stuff is. Just like the flashing lights is pretty cool. Yeah. And as we're learning, Cloud doesn't really care that what he's doing is technically wrong. He just really wants to get paid. <laughs> That's really relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to show here is that you can put Barrett in the back row here because his weapon is a gun arm that's long range. However, due to one of this game's systems, I want to keep him in the front row so he can get hit as much as possible. Limit charging. Yep, more on that towards the boss fight. Uh, this next enemy is the first ray. Uh, 18 HP, 12 XP, 5 gil. Uh, its only ability from memory is laser cannon, which is notable just because of how slow the attack animation is. Even at high battle speeds, uh, some of 7's attack animations can take a while. And it's because of that that 7 ends up being one of the longer games in battles alone. What I've noticed is that enemies that have the first, uh, the first ray, uh, I guess, I, I don't want to say palette, I would probably say sprite, is that they have very long animations. Yep. Um, did you send me these? Yeah, the... Yeah, I did. Alright, I'll get that up in a second. Oh god. Mono drives. 28 HP, uh, 18 XP, 3 AP, and 8 gil. Uh, they can use fire. I don't think I've ever seen them use drill drive before. It's, I think, fairly rare. I think they can also... I think they're the first enemy in the game that can drop Ethers. It's very low chance, but if you can get one of those, good, because 3%. Ethers in early game are one of your best uh, methods of gaining Gil, which is... Uh, Seven's technically the first game in the series to start calling money Gil, uh, even though I've called it Gil in every game we've done thus far. Called, like, GP in other games and stuff. Uh, just because I think they sell for 750, and in early game, that can be very useful. Also, there's a potion there in the way. Uh, items can be outside of chests like that, but usually they're fairly obvious. Uh, they don't really try to hide things behind other things as much in 7 as they would like in 9 or 8. Especially 9. And time for our next encounter. This is the Grunts and Sweepers. The Grunts have 40 HP, 22 XP, 15 gil. Uh, they can only drop potions. And that's about it for them, really. Yeah, the Sweepers have 140 HP, 27 XP, uh, 3 AP, and I missed the gill. My goodness, 30 gill. Uh, they can attack with W Machine Gun, but that doesn't really do a whole lot. Smoke Shot, I believe, slows a character down. I could be wrong there, but they don't drop anything. I do believe an interesting fact. In the 1996 demo, I believe, uh... The boss of this area was just a larger sweeper. <laughs> they didn't have the actual boss either in place yet, either just due to it not being completely implemented yet, or wanting to keep it a secret until the game actually got released. Hmm. And this is the save points for the game. They have these weird little question marks above them. I, for, for a long time, I thought it was a C for checkpoint, which is why it actually might be, but I also thought they were a memory card for a while at one point or another. Uh, I'm cutting out most saves throughout the game, but I just want to show you how slow saving can actually kind of be in this game. It's a lot faster on the Steam version of the game. Yeah, uh, the Steam version also has better looking graphics, mounds added to every character model, and cloud saving, uh, pun unintentional. Although I gotta tell you, pe with the ad addition of the mouths, some people have their mouths constantly open, and it bothers it looks really, It looks really weird. And that's a Restore Materia. More on what that is later. And this is where we're placing our bomb. And Cloud brings up a good point. Shouldn't he <laughs> do it? <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. We, yes. For all he knows, we never used a bomb. Whoa. Watch out. This isn't just a reactor. Oh, that was weird. So, where does that come from? I have never uh, been able to figure out what that is. I believe that's supposed to be something we see... A, a, a reference to a scene we see in part seven of this LP in particular, but it's just not translated correctly or something. Huh. Interesting. Get used to that. Seven, as much as I love it in its story, the translation is inconsistent. 
But it's time for our first boss fight, which plays the bombing mission theme, which I absolutely love. This is the Guard Scorpion. It's 800 HP, 100 XP in Gil, 10 AP, even though AP isn't really useful at this point yet. Uh, it'll drop upon defeat the assault gun weapon for Barrett, which we'll talk about that when we get it. The notable things about this boss is that it tends to use two attacks more than anything else. Search scope and, and rifle. Search scope basically targets a particular character, and it'll be targeting that until a later phase. This is a limit break. Upon taking enough damage, the limit bar uh, next to the weight gauge will fill up, and you'll get access to a limit break. Limit breaks have priority above whatever moves have been input thus far, and will just be used from there on. Barrett's first one is Big Shot, which just does a lot of damage, if I recall correctly. Uh, same with Clouds. Yeah, yeah his well. first one's braver. We'll see it later on. I am showing off every limit break throughout this LP, and I do have to do minor grinding for some of them, uh, particularly later on, but if you're looking to see any of them, uh, don't worry, you'll be covered there. Ow. Yeah, I can also hit you with its tail, but it's not really that notable. Yeah. Here's braver. Braver's actually a really cool-looking move. Like, yeah. it, for a first-level limit break, it looks pretty nice. I agree. And now for the infamous scene. Yeah. Barret, be careful. Attack while its tail's up. It's gonna counterattack with its laser. That's not supposed to be two sentences. It's supposed to be one. You're supposed to wait here. Essentially, this is the Welk slash Mist Dragon moment. Wait for the tail to go down, then continue your assault. So in the meantime, I'm dancing with the menu. Now, something that I normally do, this probably isn't a very conventional thing, but I like to fill up my lim limit breaks for Cloud especially, because with Braver, you get to move on to the next limit break if you use Braver five times, I believe. Yes, every character has, with two exceptions, seven limit breaks. Uh, you get the second one by using, of any given level, by using the first one a certain amount of times, and then you get the first one from the next level by doing a certain amount of kills. But for Cloud specifically, I just figured it would be a lot easier to build up the limit break for, you know, how many potions I have and stuff. Yeah. I'll be able to conserve, so... This boss can be useful for limit grinding, if you're into that. Uh, you don't really need to grind your limit breaks too much, especially with Cloud, given he's going to be with us throughout the entire game, minus one ex uh, instance. Yeah. Alright, and now we have an escape sequence. Ten minutes of detonation. Uh, that is actually more time than they should probably have given you. So I'm just going to equip the assault gun, raises your attack and attack percentage, and well, it's on out of here. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to run from any battles along the way. You can fight them and you'll still have plenty of time. The one thing you should note uh, is that time in a menu counts towards the timer. So say you want to pause the game and say get a drink or go to the bathroom after that boss fight. Don't because you'll likely run low on time and potentially die. Yeah. Although, if you pause the game, it will uh, stop the timer, I believe, so... Yeah. And we want to help Jessie here, because she got her leg stuck. You actually cannot progress if you don't do this, so make sure to do that. I think it's mostly because Jessie serves a purpose, albeit minor. Uh, whenever you want to interact with something, uh, like the ladders, you just have to press the confirm button next to it. Uh, there are instances, and you can see these by pressing the select button, uh, that Cloud will basically do automated jumps or walks across them. Uh, that's just so the controls aren't too complicated, basically. Uh, new areas are marked by, like, if you have the uh, select button pressed, uh, new areas will be indicated, or, like, doors will be indicated with a red triangle and ladders with a green one. Yeah. But that will probably... I don't know if you're going to be going into this area, but that'll probably be talked, uh, gone into in the next area. And that's why I need to get Jessie. She opens the doors for us. <laughs> Although, weirdly enough, Biggs opens one of the doors. I figured that Jessie would be the one to open all of them. I thought that was Wedge. It might be. Yeah, uh, Six started this tradition where every Final Fantasy has a character named Biggs and Wedge after the Star Wars characters. Uh, that's them for this game. And wow, that's a big explosion. That was a huge bomb, goodness me. Yeah, they're, 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 people died there. <laughs> An explosion should keep the planet going a little longer. Yeah. Oh. 
Well-meaning extremists. Yeah, this game uses a lot of minor FMV effects like that. Just Directed by flavor. Michael Bay. <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine a Final Fantasy VII movie? We have one, don't we? Oh. You know what? You're right. But that's not <laughs> what I meant. Hey! Pay me! Give me... Hey. <laughs> Got a meat back at the hideout. God dang it, dude. Some run. Frazzle, it, frazzle. It's not even that Barrett pays well either. Yeah. Because the amount he gives you can be very easily received. And yeah, j just look at this. We flipped over some cars. This explosion was powerful. Oof. But hey, at least that girl from the intro cutscene's there. Uh, hey, listen. We could buy a flower from this flower girl for one gill. And this starts off a very long chain of questions and answers, basically. Uh, there are four characters throughout the game that have relationship values tied to them. Uh, I believe the exact order from highest to lowest between the characters is 50, 30, 10, and 0. Uh, we've already met the person who has 0 points with them. That's Barrett. Whoever has the highest points at a certain scene later on in the game will influence that scene. By the way, that lightning jump scared the shit out of me when I first played the game. <laughs> And I'll be showing off all four of the major scenes when we get to that point, but for who I want, I want to grab that flower. Oh, I know exactly who you're going for then. <laughs> I'll be bringing up the exact options, what each of them does, the points that it gains and loses to people when the time comes. You said there's a series of four? I th I've only known about three, so uh, we'll be seeing that eventually, I guess. Yeah, uh, people say there's more than the four, but the, uh, the scenes that they use for those are from another version of that that I'll talk about when the time comes. All these people are just MPs that we saw earlier, by the way. Nothing really changed about them, so I'll just cut out the fights and get the experience points. Eh, screw this. I got a train to catch. Jump onto train. the train. And Cloud's very lucky here that this next tunnel has a high ceiling. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have gotten, uh, oh, what was the guy's name from Speed? Oh. <laughs> you, you know what scene I'm talking about? I cannot think of the name. But the it's villain in my head. Who, gets, oh. who, who has a major headache afterwards, to say the least. Maybe a few bloody noses, too. Yeah. Broken, broken nose. And some neck problems. Yeah, I'm sure we're fine. They don't have any faith in Cloud. I mean, to be fair, we are a mercenary that used to work for the people that they're fighting against, so... Yeah, because uh, they're fighting against Soldier and Shinra, and Cloud, as a member, a former member of Soldier, used to work for them, and they're worried about some conflicts that could cause. Understandably so, admittedly. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ha! I'm what awesome. a flashy entrance. Yeah, he does that a lot. Looks like I'm a little late. Now this is something, and I'll rant about this more as we go on, <laughs> but something I hate about extended Square Enix games with Cloud in particular is that they always portray him as this kind of mindless, not mindless, very emotionless, dull, stoic man. And that makes sense for Advent children at least, given <laughs> what the topic of that is and the time scale of that. But Cloud is a snarky mother trucker. Cloud... He knows exactly what to say. Yeah. All and the right moments. That's one thing I hope to remake, and we'll talk more about that as we go on, because we'll probably get more trailers about this as this oh LP goes on. Oh my god. I really <laughs> hope they don't screw that up. I always found Jesse very strange. Yeah. Like, the, the, the entire Avalanche crew feels like they were meant to do more in the original developments of the game. Yeah. Like, I, I would have figured that they could have been part of the original party, but who knows. Yeah, if I recall, the original intention for Seven was to only have three playable characters. Cloud, Barrett, and a certain character that we've seen already, but we don't know yet to put in a way. But uh, as development went on, things changed. For instance, every character was technically supposed to have a class, and I think Cloud was Mystic Knight of some sort. That makes sense, given what his uh, arsenal is at the beginning of the game, actually. Yeah, uh, in terms of stats-wise, Cloud actually has one of the best magic stats in the game, second only to one other character. Uh, so if you want to use magic uh, abilities, he's one of the best ways to go through with that. 
I'm assuming the one other person is the is uh, the person we have met but do not know yet. Yeah. Oh, wow. You're right. That is Biggs. For some reason, I always think Biggs is the fat one, probably because name. <laughs> Fair. And now we're going to take a look at the Midgar rail system. Now, I'm hoping that you can do this segment better than I can. The whole tra This whole train segment never made any sense to me. And this is Midgar. It's a giant city that is laid out in an interesting way. There's two plates to it. A top plate, which is where most of the clean civilization is, and the bottom plate, which is entirely slums and impoverished people. And the interesting thing about this scene that I learned through, I think it was Boundary Break, is that Cloud and Jesse actually have unique models for this scene that are much more detailed, even though they're basically just from the bust up, I believe, at least in Jesse's case. Oh, <coughs> well, yeah, I do. I remember, uh, I think, watching that video at one point. It's very interesting. The thing is about Seven, given the way it works, is that there's not as many walls to go through, but there's still an interesting amount of things you can find behind the scenes. And the train has this little ID system that checks the IDs of every passenger, uh, links to a databank at Shinra HQ, and sees if anyone's suspicious. And of course, since we look suspicious, we have fake IDs. And that's the ID check. Now, this never made sense to me. When the lights go off, you never know what kind of creeps will come out. That never made sense to me just because how do people hide from the IDs? The ID check system. Yeah, that, as I said, this whole train segment never made any sense. And that was part of the reason why. Now, the choice I just made there ties into the scene mechanics we talked about later on. For the, uh, If you choose the option I didn't, which is looking forward to it, the character I want will lose three points. So I chose thanks anyway to cause no changes. Now, something I do love about Seven setting right off the bat is that Midgar as an area, as we're about to see a little FMV of it, is just really cool. It's very dystopian, Blade Runner-y kind of stuff, admittedly. But when it's done well, it feels right. Also, Seven is the first game in the series to be rated teen and have some language, but they never go full out with it. So whenever yeah. Barrett brings out the big guns, uh, they bring in censored characters like that. In a way, it kind of makes it funnier, though. There's a na there's a na there's like a name for those characters. I want to see if I can figure that out in a second here. And Cloud brings up a good choice here. No one's li no one lives in the slums as sh shitty as they are because they want to. It's just because it's the only place they really can be. And this just looks cool. Grawlix. That's what it's called. Is it Grawlix? Th ah, there we go. We also get a really good idea of how sparse the slums kind of are. I think most of the population of Midgar is on the top plate. Uh, also... Uh, something you might notice in particular compared to the previous games is that 7 kind of just feels a bit visually slower compared to the other ones because the actual animations have to take time to go through. It's not just sprites flashing back and forth. Yeah, that's... You could tell it was kind of their first time dealing with that. Yeah, especially... And admittedly, I actually think this game is a bit better than, at it than 8, and even 9 in some ways, despite 9's animations being faster. Yeah. Uh, but something I've always found odd about this game is the very Popeye-like proportions for every character. They got giant, like, biceps but small forearms and all that. I think if I'm recalling correctly, it's because when this game originally started development, it was going to be on the N64, but due to disc space on the PlayStation looking a lot more attractive, they went to that. Hmm. I always... I agree. It was. It's weird seeing that Cloud has hooves for hands. Yeah. And this is the central support pillar. Every single one of the eight sectors that the plate on top is built into has one of these, and if this thing were to go down, everything comes down. That foreshadowing hitting you in the face? Just a little bit. Although it makes you wonder, do they have to build all of the support pillars at once? Uh, the way they probably constructed Midgar was starting with the pillars and then building up from there. Makes sense. Gotta start from the bottom Bottom side. up instead of top down. Yep. And welcome to the proper Sector 7 slums. I don't know why there's a Texas comedy house there when this world doesn't have a Texas. 
Now, I never understood that. Were those just people hanging out at the bar or what, or something? Yeah, because uh, Avalanche's hideout is actually... Uh, that's the name of the group we're in, by the way, Avalanche. Is in a bar, which, for a secret uh, meeting place, kind of in the public eye... Hmm. I love that kid who's cheering on like, Avalanche is so cool. Hundreds of people died. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite character themes in the entire uh, series, actually. Oh, yeah. This is, the little one there is Marlene, who is a character that's related to another character. And this here is another very important character of the game. This is Tifa. And yeah, we did kind of fight with Barrett. Tifa is the monk of the, uh, in terms of class system, she's the monk. Yeah, she's a fist fighter. And she is the next character in the little scene mechanics. Uh, she is the one I'm trying to give points to throughout the game just because I like her a lot. Uh, however, as usual, I will be mentioning the various point stuff. For instance, I got that flower earlier. If we give the flower to her, it's plus five to her. However, we can also give it to Marlene there in the back to get five points to Barrett. More on why that's points to Barrett in a few moments. Yeah. I always give it to Tifa just because I, I really like the scene with with her. Tifa, out of all the four characters, is probably my favorite, though admittedly the other scenes are really good too. Yeah. I think as a character, I much prefer Tifa. Like, I think my, my favorite team is Cloud, Tifa, and then a character that remains to be seen for quite some time like every character has their uses but tifa especially is very broken in the early game yeah although it's odd every character has their use but that mostly comes into play with their limit breaks uh due to this game's unique system uh any character can be anything it's technically the first game to do that because even six had a bit more specialization with the characters i guess not counting like three one in five due to the class system yeah gotta love the freelance system of five barrett is marlene's father it's very interesting how marlene like i always, i actually thought marlene and tifa were related because they look very similar yeah the dark hair is kind of notable also bad place to put the hideout beneath the pinball machine the most attractive thing in a bar now we can talk to Tifi here for another scene. If we have her give us something hard, we get another five points to her, which is another reason why I'm doing this beyond just dialogue. Yeah, Tifa's worrying quite a bit about Cloud. There's actually a reason for that. Cloud and Tifa have some real history with each other. Goes back five years. Oh no, farther than that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. There's a lot more. My goodness. I apparently have not been paying much attention to this game's story. Eh. Can't say I blame you. <laughs> We're talking a lot. Also, I like this. Jesse realizes that the bomb was too big. <laughs> Those deaths could have been prevented. God damn it, Jesse. Don't she she just loves things go blowy uppy. Just loves to blow things up. And Barrett's asking if we recognized anyone, but Cloud, being the snarky bitch she is, <laughs> sounds pretty sure because he realizes that if we had fought anyone from Soldier, we'd all be dead. They'd also him, probably have swords. <laughs> uh, entirely. Not everyone, I think, from Soldier uses swords. Oh! Ow. <laughs> Barrett! Barrett! That's my screen, you asshole! I love how Cloud gets on his tippy toes. Yeah, because Cloud's kind of short. He's like... He's like 5'7", five, 5'6", five, five, yeah. And Barrett's like 6'2", or something? Cloud's not a very tall guy. And Barrett, as I mentioned earlier, given the Cloud's past with Soldier, is a bit mistrusting of Cloud, despite the fact he helped him, just because he realizes, hey, he's a mercenary, he goes where the money goes. <laughs> He's, like, spazzing out. Good lord, look at that. I I love Seven's sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, seriously, why is there a sign for Texas over there? Texas doesn't exist. 
And Tifa's pleading us to join them. And Cloud just doesn't really care. He never seems to care. Nope. He realized that being with the Ecoterrorists probably could get him in a bad rep. But yeah, Tifa and Cloud known each other since childhood. Again, with points, if I say, how can you say that? I get plus five. Plus, it's just a better reaction. Uh, I believe when it comes to the Seven. points, by the way, yeah. Tifa starts with uh, 30. 30. And now we have a little flashback. This scene's always been a bit odd in presentation to me because they're supposed to be kind of reminiscing about it, but she goes, look there, the well. Yeah. Yeah, As I, if we're physically seeing it. She's just physically looking into Cloud's memories. That's gotta be it. Yeah, I guess. Tifa is a god. Is goddess. <laughs> I mean, with her abilities, I can see it. Ooh. But yeah, Cloud has been planning to go off to Soldier since about seven years ago, which is when he left town. And he made a meeting with Tifa when all that was going on. Uh, basically to say, keep an eye out on the papers for me, and I'll come back. If you ever need help, I'll be back there to help you. Interestingly, there's a lot more to this than just this, of course. This is just a very small snippet of what their history is. Yeah, this seven knowing each other since childhood, there's going to be a lot of baggage that we're not going to be seeing quite yet. You stole my ice cream cake. No! Also, shoutouts to the ponytail. Very small yeah. ponytail. Cloud's hair is probably the most ridiculous thing about his character. Uh, it got toned down in any future appearances for him. But in 7, Jesus, you can impale someone on it. In, Sma in the Smash Brothers games, they kept the proportionality the same, which I actually really appreciate. Yeah, because his default costume is his design from 7, and his secondary is his advent children. I forget from the little clips we've seen in the remake if they're keeping it more closer to the Advent Children design or this. I'm hoping they kind of go for a middle ground. Who who even thought, like, let's just give this guy hair that just goes straight up. <laughs> Nomura. Nomura. Oh, boy. <laughs> One in doubt, Nomura. This is before his big zipper and belt fetish kicked in. Oh my god. <laughs> I One character especially comes to mind. Lulu? Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Her entire lower the, body is just belts. The, the thing I find hilarious about that, by the way, is that for the FMVs in 10, they deliberately always show Lulu from the waist up so they don't have to render the belts. <laughs> That's just funny. Oh. Just hearing you talk about that really makes me want to play play 10 again, my lord. It's been too long. Game. And Barrett's paying us for the last job. 1,500, 1500 gil. 1,500 gil. That's sizable for early game, but that is kind of a paltry amount of gil, all things considered. Yeah. Especially late considering game. that late game, it is very easy to get money. That's like a single battle in late game. Yeah. Not even, like, half of one. I, 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 if I'm recalling correctly, I think we might get double that kind of money just from the next upcoming battles. <laughs> but, yeah, we're gonna help them out with the next mission for double the pay, even though Barrett's kind of salty about that because that's Marlene's school and money, as he says, but yeah, I'm sure he'll figure it out. Oh, I think this is Barrett's theme? Um... I believe, yeah. Barrett's theme's really good. It's really, ri like, you don't really hear this theme very much. Yeah, uh, I still think the most underused character theme in the entire series is Zidane, so it only gets played once. Did we sleep well? Next to you? Who wouldn't? Plus five Tifa. Barrett's story keeping us up is plus five to Barrett. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Ha ha ha. But yeah, Tifa is joining us for this mission. Which means they're leaving Marlene, the little girl who's about six years old, to tend the bar. That's pretty illegal. <laughs> I do like, uh... For the, any of you guys out there who watch, like, are aware of Team 4, Star Dragon Ball Z Abridged, Helsing Abridged, all that, they actually have a Final Fantasy VII machine abridged. And I love how they do it for Marlene there, because they basically go, I know how to cap a bitch. 
This, this second oh. Machine Bridge is really good. Uh, as of this moment, Season 3 concluded not too long ago, which is to the end of Disc 1. I need to go back and watch the whole... Because, like, that's really fun. Yeah, that's really good. Now, Barrett asked us to teach him the Materia system there, which is this game's unique system. I'll be talking about that more last part, and the reason I skipped that tutorial is that it's really long. Like, really long. Really yeah, long. and honestly, I feel like, like, if you're a newcomer, it's just easier if you just experiment with it yourself and enter battles that you won't get killed if you make a bad decision. Yeah, the Materia system is one that requires a bit of experimentation with. Yeah. Either way, now we're going to be buying some stuff throughout the shops here in Sector 7 Slums. I want to grab two Lightning Materia, which will give us the Lightning Spells. Cloud comes with one to begin with, which is why I'm only grabbing one, uh, two. Uh, one for each character. And since, uh, the thing is about Midgar in this game, basically every enemy in this area is machine type, thus we took a Lightning. And now I want to go to the Equipment Shop and buy three Iron Bangles, which are, uh... Well, they're equipment pieces. They raise their own stats, but every piece of equipment in this game, weapon or armor, has a secondary benefit. Slots. Uh, slots are what you equip materia into. We'll see that next part. I thought you said you said slots, and I was like, we're not even talking about limits yet. Yeah. Uh, also, can we just point out that that kid cursed at Cloud? He's like yeah. nine years old. Midgar is not a very clean area. Uh, this here is the beginner's house. This is the tutorial area for anything else in the game. That's the all materia, uh, pairing that with another material more what that means next part, uh, will allow it to affect either the entire enemy party or your party. And treasure chests can also look like these wooden things. Uh, if you've ever been to the beginner house, like the place in 7, uh, in 4 you go underneath the places and talk to the, uh, black mages, in 5 you talk to those people in that one house, 6 it's the house in... Oh, shit, what's the name of the town in 6? Uh, uh, oh, Narsh. Uh, Narsh. Uh, it's that place. Bit odd, because they don't play the prelude there, which is uh, usually the theme of choice for those kind of areas, but yeah. yeah. Uh, if you go up to the third floor, uh, that is the inn for this area, and I believe you talk to the kid to use that. Yeah. I don't see... I don't know if there's, like, one gill, ten gill. I don't think there's a difference. Maybe there's yeah. an item that he gives you or something for ten gill. I don't know. By the way, this is Johnny. He has a bit of an ongoing subplot throughout the game, and he's leaving Sector 7 uh, to try and grow. And there's a bit of an inconsistency with him that will go uh, throughout the game, but he refers to Cloud as childhood friend because, as far as English translation is concerned, he knew us when we were kids. Interesting. Either way, with that, we're going to need to end this off here. Bit of a longer part. Most of the parts of this LP are probably going to be between 30 and 35 minutes, but there are going to be some that get a bit longer just due to events. Yep. And in part two, we're going to be heading off towards our next reactor job. How fun is that? Ooh, very fun. See you guys then. See you later.